China's first anti-cancer boron drug completes final trials. It kills cancer cells in 30 minutes. Is this true? A very exciting news. China's cancer treatment technology has made a new breakthrough. BNCT boron drug is finally mass-produced in China. It kills cancer cells in 30 minutes at the earliest news from the China News Network. The first BPA boron drug has been successfully developed for melanoma, brain cancer, glioma, and other malignant tumors. Through boron neutron capture therapy can cure many specific cancers in as little as 30 minutes. So it's true, BNCT is one of the most advanced cancer treatments in China. Destroying cancer cells through atomic nuclear reaction inside tumor cells, it's based on the principle of injecting a non-toxic and harmless boron containing drug into the patient. The drug enters the body and quickly targets and accumulates in specific cancer cells. At this time, the patient is then irradiated with neutron rays, which do not cause much damage. The neutrons collide with the boron in the cancer cells and cause a strong nuclear reaction, releasing a very powerful heavy ion ray. The radiation has a very short range. It only kills the cancer cells without damaging the surrounding tissue. This targeted radiotherapy technique, which selectively kills only cancer cells without damaging normal tissue, is called boron neutron capture therapy. This PBA boron drug has completed API and formulation pharmacology studies. And final scale preparation process validation has been completed. It can be used in China's major BNCT neutron therapy device research and development organizations too, to carry out relevant research experiments and clinical applications. This is the result of China's increased support for innovative drug development over the years. It will free tumor patients from the pain of the disease. Cancer can be solved. So can the problem of aging be solved. In fact, in the past 20 years, scientists have made a breakthrough in analyzing the human genome. They first discovered the longevity gene that controls aging. Then they discovered that NAD+, the substance that activates the longevity gene and inhibits aging in mammals, is present in human cells. The amount of NAD plus in the human body decreases with age. So if you want to stay, you can be achieved by increasing the level of NAD us in the body. Currently, there are eight Nobel Prize winners who openly support the anti-aging theory of NAD plus. However, NAD plus is a large molecule, cannot be directly supplemented. In 2014, Dr. David Sinclair of Harvard University, a leading expert in the field of anti-aging in the United States, found that in experiments on mice. After giving NMN to 22-month-old mice for one week, which is equivalent to the human body at the age of 60, NAD plus levels in mice returned to a similar state as six-month-old mice to the human equivalent of 20 years old. So far, the life code of human longevity has been gradually unlocked. In 2016, Vano's Hover team developed NMN suitable for human consumption. In 2019, the team developed the fourth generation of NMN compound formula again. It can be absorbed and converted into NA plus faster than single NMN, 20 May 20. Vano's Harvard team successfully constructed a high expression vector for immobilized NMN and developed the fifth generation NMN product formulation. Based on it, achieved more precise formulation between different genders in humans Absorption and conversion rates are infinitely close to the limit values. Perhaps the emergence of the fifth generation NMN can really change the new era of human longevity. Are you ready to enter longevity? Do you know how you went from a tadpole to a baby? When your life is not going as well as you would like it to be, you must think about this process, and perhaps it will give you the motivation to persevere. At the beginning of the big battle, you and your hundreds of millions of brothers are moving forward, full of hope for the future. However, on the long female 20 centimeter road, the vast majority of your partners will be firmly trapped by the mucus of the channel, because the environment of the channel is acidic, and you, who are weakly alkaline, can only rely on your body to neutralize the acidity. In the process, the freakishly wonky brothers don't make it past this point. Yet you dare not stop for a moment to even look back at your fallen buddies. At this point the female hormones help to clear the mucus from the passageway and provide a ladder to climb into the cervix, 
where only the strongest tadpoles can make it, and you're obviously one of the elite. However for the very few lucky partners who make it through the cervix, the battle is just beginning. First you are confronted by millions of white blood cells and macrophages, which will kill you without mercy for the function of the immune system. On top of that, there is a brutal multiple choice question in front of you, because the mother has two tubal channels, but only one of them has an egg bride waiting for you at the end of it, with a 50% probability that if you choose wrongly you will be doomed. So besides a strong body, luck is a crucial factor. You and some of your brothers chose the right path, and in the end only about 20 of the elite successfully reached the fallopian tube and became the lucky contestants. But at this moment, you have long been exhausted after several days of melee, so you have to rest where you are, recuperate and prepare for the debut of your egg bride. Unlike the tadpoles produced by men, a woman's eggs are formed when she is still in her womb, numbering between 1 and 2 million. However, most of the eggs are consumed as the female grows, and the final number of mature eggs is about 300 to 400. Within 48 hours of the tadpole's slumber, the ovary releases a fully developed egg, which radiates a signal to guide your awakening. The tadpoles have finally met their egg bride after a long and arduous journey. But don't get too excited, as there are up to 20 of the elite competing with you, and it's not clear who will be able to combine with the egg in the end. At this moment you start the last 100 meters sprint, make every effort to the egg bride forward, and finally you are the first, carrying a unique chromosome penetrate the protective membrane of the egg successfully combined with the egg. However, at the moment of your entry, the egg senses the tadpole's power and immediately releases a signal. The egg's protective membrane will become incredibly hard, and the tadpole that rushes up behind you will no longer be able to enter, and will only be able to choke on it. Although you have successfully entered the egg, the real challenge of turning it into a baby has just begun. In the fertilized egg from the fallopian tube to the warmth of the uterus in the process has begun in the division. 1 into 2, 2 into 4, 4 into 8. However, in this process, the probability of success is only 30%. At any time the division may fail as well as the risk of ectopic pregnancy. The fertilized egg secretes fluid and expands into a blastocyst after successful implantation. And it is at this point that your task is initially accomplished. But it is the end of the 10,000 mile journey that heralds the beginning of the baby's formation. After about 3 weeks, you begin to see the differentiation of cells and tissues and your heart and head slowly take shape. Immediately afterward you grow fish gills and a lizard's tail, and look like a baby seahorse. By the tenth week, you finally develop your uniquely human features, and at this point you are about 9 centimeters long, and your features are beginning to enter the puzzle stage. At this critical time, any problems with the mother's body, including smoking, drinking or even mood swings, can lead to cleft lip and palate. Ten months later once you are in labor, your mother endures 10 levels of pain to make you finally land on earth. This grueling process of 10 months of pregnancy can only be experienced by the mother. So after watching the video please be kind to your mom and wife. And don't feel too bad when you are disappointed. Think about your own journey when you were the first to fight, and believe that you are the best one. Do you know? Offshore drilling platforms can be towed and moved like this, and they can also be driven by their own propellers. Today let's learn about this gigantic structure. Generally speaking, in shallow waters up to 1,700 feet or 518 meters, drilling platforms use fixed towers to stabilize their position. In slightly deeper waters, like from 457 meters to 1,494 meters, they still use fixed towers, but the steel of the tower is much larger than the former. However, nowadays, most offshore oil is located in deep waters. Relying on fixed towers would not only skyrocket costs, but also limit the drilling area. So, floating platforms were born. In this video, we'll take the semi-submersible floating platform as an example. Its support structure consists of two huge pontoons, which ensure the tugboats can operate smoothly. Some platforms also have large propellers installed at the bottom of the pontoons for self-propulsion. The pontoons have four massive anchors, anchoring the platform in the designated area. Once everything is ready, the pontoons submerge slightly, becoming submerged by seawater. This ensures that the platform's center of gravity is in a reasonable position. We can compare the stability of the platforms in huge waves before and after submersion. Now, let's look at the general structure of the drilling platform. This is the crane tower, used for lifting or lowering drill columns. These three are cranes, for transporting large materials. 
This is the living area where the platform workers and officers reside. This is the helicopter pad for incoming and outgoing helicopters. This is the lifeboat, which you all know its use. This is the storage tank, used for storing fuel, drinking water, or other liquids. This is the flare stack, used for burning flammable gas. Crude oil generally contains flammable gas, and this gas must be separated. It is usually sent to this flare stack for combustion, ensuring the platform's safety. Now let's see how it drills for oil. The drill bit is lowered by the crane, then slowly enters this casing. Like this. When it reaches the seabed, the drill starts working downwards. During this process, high-pressure water is pumped in, and the mud and rock fragments drilled out are removed from the casing. When they reach a certain depth, the casing stops descending. But the drill inside continues to drill down. Then the drill is retracted and replaced with a slightly smaller casing. At this point, cement and mud are pumped inside, separated by a divider. The divider, acting like a piston, moves downward, pushing the cement outside the casing until the entire channel is filled with cement, fixing the casing in place. The purpose of the mud on top is simple, to prevent the high pressure outside from squeezing the casing. The mud inside the casing provides support. As it drills deeper, the process is repeated, and the diameter of the casing becomes smaller and smaller. When it reaches the oil layer, another crucial equipment is installed at the top of the well, the blowout preventer. The pressure of the oil pumped from the oil layer is often very high. Without the blowout preventer, the entire platform could face catastrophic accidents. About this, you can watch a movie called The North Sea, which describes this process and the resulting destruction of the drilling platform due to an accident.